Tonight is March the 20th of 2025. Uh, <clears throat> this is the second little uh, Macintosh 225. I'm going to roll it over and show you its performance here in a minute uh, that I've had in my shop in the last couple of years. And uh, the, the problem has been the same in both. I want to show you what they are. It's obviously a, a weakness. I mean, they only lasted like, you know, 50 or 60 years, but <laughs> but the, everything has a certain kind of weakness. Okay, okay, I know I got, I'm holding the camera, moving things around a little bit, but I want to show you what's wrong. What's wrong is this 27K right here and this 30K. I don't remember which one is open. I think it's the 30. One of them is completely open. And then there's this 18K. And see, so we can measure straight across from ground to because you know we don't have anything else parallel with it. See, so here's the other channel, the 27 and the 30K. But uh, the other one that I had in here did ex had exactly the same problem. This 30K resistor right here is burned open. And this 18K right here measures like 6K. This one measures okay. I'll, let, let me show you. We can, uh, one side of it goes straight to ground, so we can just hook one side to the chassis. I know I'm moving the camera around a lot, but I got, I got to do all I can here. Okay, that's the ground side. Okay, whoops. Sorry, 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 sorry. I'm doing the best I can here. Okay. And this one measures 16K. That's not too bad. Okay. This one over here measures, I got that one hooked up, 6.6K, 6.7K. So that one's bad. That's probably what started the avalanche. That's my opinion. And now, again, oh my God, I'm doing the best I can holding the camera steady. Uh, th this one's open. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace this one, obviously, because it's 6K, because that's probably what caused this one to open over current. Now, this channel over here actually performs perfectly. These two are intact, and that one is uh, 16K instead of 18, which is okay. But we're going to replace that one, that one, that one, and obviously this one, and, and this open one, and that one, too. But, uh, and you can see how hot it's been right there. See, it's got the phenolic burnt. Same thing over here. So there's some real heat generated probably in that resistor right there. And I'm going to make that a 2K. The reason I'm showing you this, and I'm not going to show you a whole lot more about it. I'm just going to go ahead and repair it, and then we'll do some testing on it. I'll show you how beautiful this thing is. The lettering and everything on it is just absolutely magnificent. But uh, if you get one of these things in and it sounds bad or whatever, uh, I mean, there could be other things wrong with it that can go wrong over the, I think these were made in the late 60s, early 70s, probably late 60s. So, you know, they're 60 years old and they're, they're just gorgeous little amplifiers. This one has been restored years ago by, uh, let's see, this outfit right here. <laughs> That audioclassics.com and they, they did a they did a nice job, but uh, you know they replaced a lot of a lot of the components in here. They did not go through and recap it. It still has all of these orange drop top capacitors in it, which I've always been a fan of. It looks like they might have replaced those two. I hope this thing's unplugged. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Because, you know, a little, a little vacuum tube amplifier like this, you get in the plate supply, it'll knock your butt off. One of the things I always liked about Macintosh, they put a secondary fuse in here, just in case uh, the user gets, uh, you know, it's blowing fuses and he puts a, a 30 amper in here. It can still blow this one. I, I, I've always respected them for that. But anyway, uh... I've only worked on two of these in my life, and both of them had the same problem. Uh, the other one had these resistors burned up, and I did the same thing I'm going to do to this one. So, I'll stop right here, I'll fix it, and then I'll be right back. Okay, repairs have been made. 
I wasn't too hard. As you can see, can't put my finger in there because it's all warmed up. I want you to see the harmonic profile of it. There's those two watt. There's the 18K, the 30K, and the 27K. I made sure that the tolerance band is pointed to the back, just like all the other resistors. I think they do a beautiful job. I don't know that just the way that the Macintosh builds their stuff. They, I mean, that doesn't make any difference. Resistors are not polarized. But to me, it just goes to show that they're paying attention. You know? I don't think this is showing the colors correct. That's an 18. I can't put my finger in there. That's an 18K. That looks like a 100K, but that's a 30K and a 27K. Yeah, the colors are off a little bit. There, you can see it's a 30K now. Anyway, that is what it is. And uh, here's all the parts that I pulled out. Yeah, you can see that... Uh, one of these resistors, I guess it's that one, it's just open. I did the best I could to, uh, kicking everything here, to wrap the wires around it and pinch it down like it's going to, you know, be in a B-29 bomber, the way that they uh, wire things. I did the best I could there. It'll last a thousand years, you know. And But here's something that I, I that this is the last part I want to show here. Let me see if I can get this thing to sit down. Okay. Let's just look at, uh, at this. Now, I've always heard, and uh, I told my friend that bought this, that the, uh, the Mac 225 was always the, the cat's meow of uh, the little amplifiers, 25 watts per channel. And I want to show you, let me see here, what do I need to do? I need to, uh, okay, left channel, here we go. I know what I'm trying to do here. I'm going to get there. 25 watts. Okay, overdriving a little bit there. Turn it down. We'll set everything at 25 watts. That's what it's rated at. See, there's this 20. Well, it's at 26. That's okay. And uh, that's the left channel. That was the bad channel. And there's its THD up there. You can see that. I don't have to zoom in. 0.15. at 26 watts. There's this beautiful sound wave. We'll change channels here. This is the right channel. Well, I've got it cranked up a little high there, haven't I? Let's turn it back down to 25. There's its 25 watts. There's its THD, 0.07. Wow. See, 0.07 for the right channel and 89.09 for the left channel. But here's the thing that I find interesting about it. Look here. Being a push-pull amplifier and it having this this is like the like I say I've always heard it uh, sold as uh, and taught it as the cream of the crop and look at its second harmonic. It's actually the dominant harmonic. It's way down at full output. But it is the dominant harmonic. That is the uh, left channel. There's the right channel. Same thing. Isn't that amazing? Maybe that's what makes it sound so good. Absolutely amazing. I didn't know that. Right channel. Left channel. Yes, there's obviously a difference, and there's always going to be a difference. But that's not a that is not an issue. I mean, the the differences are are very minor. If we turn this thing up, the clipping here we got that got all that bright stuff again. You can see that. Let's see. This is the left channel. This is the one we fixed. If we turn this up to clipping, right there it starts at clipping. Just a little bit of clipping. Very symmetrical, 32 watts. That's at 2%. 1% uh, is, uh, I don't want to stick my finger in there. 1% is, that's 0.9 at 31 watts. And uh, it's just thinking about clipping. 
So it's rated at 25. So it does at least 30. And there's its harmonic profile. Uh, you know, right, right at the edge of clipping. Second harmonic is still dominant. I mean, we got that second, third, fourth, that fifth harmonic out there doing something weird, but you know, it's it's okay. It's perfectly okay. And here it is down here on the on the mighty uh, 3580A. It gives you the same thing. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. The mighty little uh, Macintosh 225. I'm uh, I'm very pleased that I had all of the parts to fix it. Now, I'll show you something else. Gotta be real careful with this thing because it's plugged in. It's about 450 volts in there. It'll knock your butt off. Even some of these old resistors in here. I wish I had a, here's a, pointer, a pointer that's uh, going to electrocute me. Well, maybe I, maybe I don't have a pointer that will electrocute me. Some of these uh, really high quality resistors, look at that, it's, it, they even stamp on here like it, it's uh, it's value and everything. Yeah, this thing in here looks like a, looks like a 100K, but that's a, that's orange, black, orange. Sure as well, it shows to 27K, okay. There's 18K, brown, gray, uh, orange. See, it looks yellow in here. That's not 180K. That is brown, gray, orange in real life. So uh, there you go. Well, I hope you enjoy. And, then, and I think the reason that I uh, felt like I ought to make a, uh, a video of this is that uh, if you ever pick up one of these, like I say, this is the second one I've worked on, and they both had exactly the same problem. So there you go. Thanks for watching. Stay safe.